bond.org. And this is theCUBE, where we extract the signal from the noise. We bring you the best guests at these events. We're here at the MongoDB Days conference in New York City. Max Shearson is here. He's the CEO of TenGen. Of course, TenGen is the company that is building out uh, the ecosystem around MongoDB. Max, welcome to theCUBE. Thank, thanks for having me and thanks for coming to our conference, Dave. Yeah, I appreciate you guys uh, having us here and uh, heard you know, a great keynote this morning from the, the deputy mayor. I'm here with my co-host as well, uh, Jeff Kelly. So Max, um, in the keynote we heard a lot about um, what's going on in the ecosystem. The mayor talked about New York. You guys are here, New York based. Let's, sure. let's start there. Uh, New York has, over, has surpassed Boston as the number two uh, region in the country for venture capital. I'm from Boston, makes me a little sad, but, uh, but it's not surprising. A um, lot of action down here, largely coming from industries that are transforming. Talk about that a little bit and you know, what New York means to, to TenGen. Sure, so the company was founded in New York. The founders of TenGen came out of DoubleClick. And uh, you know, they, they were in New York, they love New York. You can't take a New Yorker out of New York. People love New York or they hate it and they love it. <laughs> so, uh, so the company was going to be here and it's actually worked out phenomenally well. It's just been a great labor pool for us in New York. I think New York has had a lot of momentum in technology as technology has, has intersected so many traditional businesses and disrupted them that the combination uh, of technical skills with people who understood businesses from publishing to fashion to finance that, that were being disrupted by, by technology uh, to media and advertising it has really led to a, a growth of technology in New York. Now it said most of the technology is at an application services on the internet type of layer. I think uh, TenGen and MongoDB are uh, not typical of the type of companies that, that you find in New York, but we, uh, in working at a deep systems infrastructure level, but we've been very, very happy with the, the labor pool. I think the energy and the vibrancy, the diversity of New York uh, uh, makes it a great place for us to be located. The timing's been phenomenal for Mongo and TenGen. They say, you know, you got to combine skill with, with a little bit of luck. The combination of just the explosion of, of data, unstructured data, this whole what's now called the big data meme. You guys started before people were talking about big data. Um, but, but you know, the database business, which you've, you're very familiar with, you've been in the business for a long time, used to be with Oracle. It used to be 10 years ago, database business was kind of boring. You know, if you go to a party, hey, you're in the database business, okay, see you later. And now it's like the hottest segment going. You know, it reminds me of the you know, late 80s, early 90s, all kinds of you know, jockeying for position. And Mongo really has rocketed. To what do you attribute that, uh, that early success? Yeah, I think that the founders really got the basic product concept right. I think uh, what, what people have been looking for is a database which is more agile than the relational database and which is more scalable, works well in cloud style, scale out architectures. And, and neither of those was a natural fit for the relational database that was invented in 1970 for a very different set of requirements. So I think it'll have a big, big place in the industry for many years to come, but, but people are realizing that many of the problems they're solving now need a different type of technology, and I think Dwight and Elliot really hit on the technology that people were looking for. Let's unpack those problems a little bit. Just pun intended, I guess. Do a double click on, on that. <laughs> uh, help us understand some of those problems. Why the traditional RDBMS is, is not as well suited uh, to solve the problems that you guys are, are addressing and maybe talk about some of the customers that you have. Sure, uh, so yeah, over the last uh, decade in particular, a lot has changed about uh, the way people develop software and the type of software that, that they're developing. Um, uh, where most applications used to be internal, now a large portion of applications go out and, and touch organizations, customers, and a much more intimate part of their business is involved in, in technology. They're, they're doing uh, development in a more rapid, agile, iterative approach. It's not a matter of take two years, build this application, and then you're done with it, or you'll take another two years to revamp it. They, they want to revise their applications uh, weekly, or in some cases daily. Often the target platform is mobile, going out to millions of users, and the data that they're working with is not just 
the, the regular rows and columns of numbers in a spreadsheet that the relational database was designed for decades ago, doing payroll, doing accounts receivable, doing accounts payable, but it's dealing with social media, dealing with user-generated content, dealing with integration of a lot of different data, uh, and bringing that together, and, and the flexibility of the data model of MongoDB and the built-in uh, scale-out capabilities just fit so well with those trends. Yeah, Jeff Kelly, you were in uh, San Francisco this week, and uh, the whole Internet of Things, uh, the industrial internet, that's even just going to generate more data, but uh, what's your take on all this? Sure, well of uh, course with uh, you know, machines becoming intelligent and sensor technology just creating more and more data, uh, and often you're going to want to surface that data in applications uh, such as the type of applications that you can support with MongoDB. Uh, so Max, I, I wonder if we could dig in a little bit to the, you know, we hear, we, we hear a lot from developers. We, we love working with Mongo, it's, it's, it's a really simple, easy uh, uh, developer environment. Can you explain a little bit more, uh, dig into that a little bit, what makes um, Mongo so popular with developers specifically? What, what makes it, quote, easy to use or easy to develop applications with Mongo? Sure, um, so the biggest difference between MongoDB and the relational databases that people are used to is the, the data model. In a relational database, the basic unit th that you work with it is called a row, and, and it's a fixed set of fields, fixed quantity and, and fixed what they are. And, and so to model the variability uh, of real world data. Y you have to bring together many different tables, many different rows, and somehow create a fusion between them. And there's functionality in a relational database to, to support that, but there's some complexity associated with it. I in MongoDB, the, the fundamental unit of storage I is what we call a, a document, which can have hierarchy, which can have repeating groups, something like an order can be a single document in MongoDB, whereas in a relational database, that logical item of an order winds up being split across dozens to, in some cases, over a hundred different tables to accommodate the variety of different information that, that can be a part of an order. So that's just an order of magnitude simplification for developers and the work they have to do to interface with the database. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to turn to some of the uh, some of the customer wins you've had recently. Sure. So again, I, we, we know that with uh, web startups and mobile startups, uh, Mongo is very popular, but we're seeing you start to gain some traction in some more, I guess, what you call traditional industries, financial services. Sure. I know you've uh, established a financial services advisory group really to explore how NoSQL can, can make a po positive impact in the financial services industry. Uh, MetLife, Goldman Sachs, others involved in that effort. Um, talk a little bit about how, uh, how you're kind of targeting the uh, enterprise in general, financial services in particular, and what is what is Tengen doing to make Mongo, quote unquote, you know, harden for the enterprise? Sure. So a as we uh, evolve, and in addition to, to the web companies, both the startups and the eBay's and, and larger established leaders on the web, we move into traditional uh, Main Street b businesses, financial services, telecommunications, government. There, there are, some of the requirements have a different prioritization in, in those industries. So things like security rank higher for a bank maybe than they do for, for some web companies. Things like manageability and operations rank higher. So it's all uh, functionality that all of our users benefit from, but, but we've accelerated the development of things like security and auditing and monitoring and backup. Uh, and some of the operational tools, monitoring, that, that uh, the larger enterprises find important. Yeah, some of the basic blocking and tackling. We heard you talk about that uh, earlier today. And you guys, are, you're going to, if you stay at the, the, the MongoDB days at the end, you're going to lay out the roadmap a little later on. And I don't know, maybe you can show us a little leg in this session. Um, I wanted to uh, uh, turn attention, so we're in New York City, and of course the big talk of the last two days, the market, you know, it's going crazy, Bernanke's statements uh, that the economy's getting better because send the market's you know, diving. Well, there you go. <laughs> but uh, Oracle announced last night, uh, it's now a couple of quarters where we're seeing some, some bumpiness. Silicon Angle reported, uh, you know, the relationship between the open source, the, the new style of, of, of database movement and some of Oracle's woes. Um, do you buy that premise um, and you know, what are your thoughts on some of the sort of traditional legacy infrastructures out there? How, how do you see that changing over time? Sure, I think there's a reinvention of enterprise infrastructure underway that's driven by a, a number of factors. 
Uh, one is the move to new styles of deployment, cloud style deployment, commodity hardware uh, uh, is, is one of the factors. Uh, people look for new types of technology infrastructure. People are uh, becoming much more open, not just to cloud deployment of technology, but to SaaS based offerings. So I think the, the pressure on the traditional enterprise technology players comes from a, a mix of uh, software as a service on the application side and then open source on, on the technology side. And that's driven by, I think, both technology shifts, people getting more comfortable with, with cloud deployments as well as uh, people looking for improved economics. They've been a relatively small group uh, of providers uh, on the enterprise side, uh, generally with fairly high price points. It's, uh, great for the shareholders to drive tens of billions of dollars of revenue at 50 plus percent margins, but eventually customers start looking for alternatives that, that are both going to be more functional, more agile, and more cost effective. Well, and, and you know, certainly I guess with the Oracle's acquisition of Sun, they've got a, you know, uh, some inherent incentives now to sell more hardware. IBM obviously sells a lot of hardware, Microsoft really doesn't. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but essentially, if you think of those companies as software companies, just mm -hmm. for a moment, why not commoditize the hardware? I mean, that would be in their best interest, wouldn't it, to put more function into the software? So, so over time, don't they have to transform? I mean, maybe come to you and say, hey, Max, here's a billion dollars, you want to buy your company, and, you know, <laughs> and then act like they own, you know, invented the whole, whole space. Will the old line, sort of legacy software companies be able to respond and transform, or do you expect this is a whole new wave of leaders that we're going to see? What's your take on that? I think one of the challenges for, for the traditional enterprise uh, companies in really embracing this technology is the open source nature of most of the innovation in the database space recently. Mm -hmm. And that creates a bit of an innovator's dilemma where, where the pricing at which we sell is not real appealing uh, to an Oracle, for, for example. And so I think it'll be a challenge for them to figure out to, to what extent do you embrace the new technology paradigm versus to what extent do you try to protect your price points? Well, and some guys have, have, have I always joke it's Lou Gerson's line, but IBM is a recovering alcoholic relating to open source software. And of course, you guys just did uh, a, a deal with IBM. Um, and so there's, you have some of these old line companies that have proven that they can make money in open source, and Oracle's never you know, been a big purveyor of open source software. So, some will make that transition, some will not. Is that essentially what you're saying? Absolutely, we've been really excited about the work that we've been doing with IBM. We, we're excited about the energy and focus that they've put behind working with us, and, and we've seen IBM follow that through to great success, for example, with Linux. Uh, IBM also w was a big part of the development of the relational database. They, right. they invented and, and got behind the, the SQL standard and became a big player in the market with, with Oracle probably as the leader in, in that space. Yeah. So we're excited to have IBM join us in this space. We think I, IBM entering a market like this uh, uh, potentially pretends a, a big future for the market. Is it your sequel moment uh, with JSON? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's got to be really excited about it that. It is. Yeah. Um, so, uh, kind of kind of wrapping up, just want to if you can give us kind of an update on the company. You mentioned your keynote. Uh, I think you've got uh, about up to maybe over 100 engineers now working on the product. Uh, 250 people in the company total. Give us a, give us a quick update on on the company and um, kind of where you stand there. Sure. Um, so the company's been growing very quickly in the last. Two and a half years, we've gone from uh, 20 a few employees to 250 odd. Uh, I talked to our class of interns this year and it was the size of the company when I joined <laughs> two and a half years ago. So it's, it, it's been a lot of growth and it's really been in response to the tremendous uh, surge in usage uh, of MongoDB. Uh, uh, so we're, we're trying to grow to be able to service the, those people who are using MongoDB and to be able to build out MongoDB for that diverse set of requirements. So we anticipate strong continued growth probably by uh, late next year will be o over 500 people and uh, continued uh, growth into the future. It's a big market. Uh, we're, we're having a great time. We're really excited by what our customers are doing. We're excited by the reception that MongoDB has had in the marketplace and we're working hard to, to continue to build the team to meet that demand. 
All right, Max, I know you're really busy and you got to go, and uh, everybody's tugging at you here. A lot of customers, a lot of developers want your time, but uh, really appreciate you coming on theCUBE. Hope you can come back on at some point. Love to, love to pick up this and, and other topics. So uh, really appreciate you, again, having us here and coming on theCUBE. Great, thanks for having me. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back. This is theCUBE. We're live in New York City at the MongoDB Days. We'll be right back. <laughs>